Hey, it's Pugs from PMS, the Pugs Moran Show, every day, noon to two, on thebarlive.com. I'm going to talk a little bit about Joe Paterno today. I know we covered some of it on today's show, but I thought with this uh, uh, new medium at my disposal that maybe we could do a couple of extended rants here. So, here goes. Joe Paterno is a coward. Joe Paterno is not only a coward, but... I, and many other people believe, an accessory to the systematic rape and abuse of countless, I mean, we don't even know if all the victims have come forward, young boys, young boys that he was presumably helping. Now, you might say, Pugs, why do you say he's a coward? Uh, well, and I'll tell you. I'm glad you asked, by the way. Uh, he's a coward because, first of all, well, he's, he's Catholic. Let me back up a bit. And Joe Paterno wasn't just... Catholic. I mean, he was like Mel Gibson Catholic. He didn't go in for that Vatican II BS. He liked his masses in Latin, and he likes his nuns wearing burkas. That's the kind of Catholic Joe Paterno was. And one thing that I can tell you that I know as a lapsed Catholic, it's that Catholics love to do the ostrich. They love to bury their head in the sand and pretend that something horrible that happened never actually happened. You know, the Soviets did this too. Uh, they had a policy under Stalin of making people and make, making, making things uh, non-events or non-people. For instance, uh, there was a plane that went down. It was a passenger plane, and it killed hundreds and hundreds of people over Siberia. And the rest of the world knew that this is, had occurred, but officially, the Soviets never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Comrade, I have no idea what you're talking about. No plane crashed in Siberia. Let's get to Moose and Squirrel. Nah, never happened. Trotsky and Melyankov. Two of the uh, uh, larger-than-life icons of Soviet-era Russia do not officially exist. If you were to look at the official history uh, there at the Kremlin, you will not find any mention of Leonid Trotsky or uh, Melyankov anywhere. They didn't exist. The Catholic Church has a very similar attitude. I mean, again, all you got to do is look at the church sex scandals. And this is the kind of ideology that Joe Paterno had. So in 1998, when it was revealed that his best friend and former defensive linebacker coach, Jerry Sandusky, the guy who ran the children's charities and was just such a great man about the community. In 1998, when Joe Paterno found out that his friend was engaging in these weird-ass things with children, he didn't cut ties for them. He didn't, he didn't go to the police. In fact, he worked overtime to convince President Spanier... A.D. Curley and Vice President Schultz not to go to the authorities. And as it turns out, that was their initial inclination. And boy, they should have gone with their gut. They, because this whole thing would have been over. Now, Joe Pa would have been embarrassed. And uh, that's a tough one. But hey, you do the right thing, bad things happen to people. If you do it, and if you handle it correctly. And what's the old saying? It's not about getting knocked down. It's about how you get back up. Well, Joe Paterno probably could have... Uh, could have survived, and his legacy would certainly not be what it is now, had he used that sort of ideology. At any rate, it's just disgusting. It's just so sad. I was one of these guys who grew up thinking that Joe Paterno was Joe Pa. You know, it was fun watching the old guy run out of the tunnel. and He had such a glistening image. His kids graduated, and no trouble on that team. Well, first of all, that's crap. I mean, we know Penn State's had a lot of troubled players. But at any rate, it's now official. Coach Joe Paterno knew what was going on with his best buddy, Jerry Sandusky, and he did nothing about it. I stand corrected. He did do something about it. He swept it under the rug. And post-1998, I believe they're saying uh, three to five other incidences occurred on, or possibly occurred, on Penn State property post-1998, post-Joe Pa sweeping it under the rug. That blood is on that man's hands. Joe Paterno's probably lucky he's dead because this would not go on. How, how do you? Man's legacy is completely, completely ruined. And then you've got today. Oh, and rightfully so, by the way. Now, I'd also like to ask, how many of you out there, if you found out that your best friend was a serial child sex offender, how many of you wouldn't cut loose your association with this guy? I mean, look, uh, maybe you go to the police, maybe you don't. I think you have to go to the police. Well, whatever, that's on you. I find out my best friend is, uh, is raping kids. He's not my best friend anymore. He certainly doesn't get keys. He certainly doesn't get access to all the Penn State facilities and carte blanche to come and go as he please, off hours, 
on hours, whenever. I mean, this is what he would do. He would use his access to Penn State to essentially wine and dine these children in the same way that I might wine and dine a girl I'm taking out. And he did it with the way that, you know, little kids are impressed who grow up around that area. You give them access to the field. You take them into the locker room. Show them all the cool Penn State stuff. And then you diddle them in the showers. Coach Joe knew about this. And Joe Pa did absolutely nothing. Again, stand corrected. He did do something. He swept it under the rug. Today comes news that Nike at their headquarters there in Oregon, they have decided to strip the Joe Paterno name off of their corporate child care centers. Boy, that's creepy, huh? Didn't know that existed. Yeah, apparently if you work at Nike there in Oregon and you want to take your kid to work or you, know, you want daycare facilities, whatever it is, they've got it right there on campus. And it's the Joe Paterno Child Welfare Center. Nice move, Nike. So they've done that. And now there's talk that the statue, the gigantic Joe Paterno statue that hangs there, or hangs there, I'm sorry, stands there right out in front of the stadium. The stadium, by the way, that will never be named Joe Paterno Stadium. They're talk of getting rid of that statue as well. Some people think that that's overkill. I don't know, though. I don't know. I think you need to honestly distance yourself as much as possible from the name Joe Paterno. Because as of today, the name Joe Paterno carries just as much stink as the name Jerry Sandusky. Certainly not to the grave extent that Sandusky. Sandusky's a monster. I can't belittle that. But Joe Paterno's a bad man, too. Doesn't deserve a stadium. Doesn't deserve a statue. He did the wrong thing, and children got hurt because of it. I guess now it's in the hands of the people who run Penn State. I mean, what are they going to do? Uh, maybe the people who run Penn State can take a lesson from the former Soviet Union. And when asked the next time, hey, how about that Joe Paterno? They'll simply answer, who? I'm sorry, we don't know who that is. Joe Paterno, now a non-person in Happy Valley. I'm Pugs Moran. Tune in to PMS, the Pugs Moran Show, noon to two, every day at thebarlive.com.